Demonstration, you can approach. We start the explanation. Take your time. <laughs> Just wait for people and we'll get started. Yeah, I'm a robot. Right, excellent. Fantastic. So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for coming today with us. We're here on behalf of the Malta's Royal Artillery Regiment. Monday to Saturday we offer, as an organization, seven historical places and five are here in Valletta, so there is no need to walk so much, okay? We explain and keep alive 500 years of Maltese and of course we weren't here. Mm -hmm. Right, back in the day the public time used to be announced or marked 2011. Today for safety we need to fire new guns. Okay, we cannot fire the other guns from Victorian times. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So let's speak about the model. So built in 2011, made of iron, two tons each cannon. The name of the gun, because every gun has a name, is the 32 pounds a smoothbore breech loader cannon. I know it's a very useful knowledge you can take home. Okay. The first part of the name is a number, 32 pounds, which equals 14 and a half kilograms. This is the weight of the cannon model that you can see behind you. But you want, of course, to pick them up. No cannibal is fired from the platform for arbitrary. The second part of the name is a smooth board. I'm going to open the gun for you. If you take a look inside, you will see that the guns have no pattern. There is no rifle inside. So they are not precise. They are not accurate guns. So if we load and fire a cannonball, after the firing, the cannonball will bounce inside many, many times. So the direction will be accurate, okay? And the last part of the name, sorry, by the way. In the past, the cannonball and the gunpowder used to be loaded separately. As technology advanced, it became a system, which is right here. Traditionally, the guns used to be loaded from the front. A cannon is always loaded from the front. However, this was not efficient. Ten gunners in Victorian time, for example, or during the Napoleonic Wars, so we close it and then we fire from here, because here we have the place we've got to put the trigger. Right? Fantastic. These guns were never used in a war. In every gun. It's a bend hole. The bend hole communicates the outside with the inside of the gun. It's really, really important because we had to put the trigger right on it, okay? So, First, we need to clean the bend hole from previous or preceding firings. There is gunpowder sometimes, okay? Because we fired them like this. Also, by doing like this, I'm supposed to feel that the gun is absolutely empty. Right. The next thing to do is to open the bridge. This baleta, kung saan ako nakatayo.
you're going to be firing well known with a gun. All you have to do is remain where you are. You will be loading both of the cannons but firing only one of them. The second cannon will be fired in case the first one has a misfire. So it is there for backup reasons. After the firing, please remain where you are because there is still a live cartridge inside the second cannon which needs to be taken back to the gunpowder source. Once that is done, you are free to roll the battery wherever you wish. There will also be a battery tour of around 30 minutes if you can bear the heat about the history of this loaded battery. You wish. Holds on the cartridge. This one has to receive the spark, and the spark comes from the trigger that I'm going to show you right now. So we have these uh, three parts: the hammer, the spring and the fuse holder. The second part of this mechanism, which is essential for the firing, is the fuse. The fuse is a simple tube made of brass as well, with gunpowder inside and this percussion cap on top, right on top. So I screw it like this. So I have to pull the trigger, the hammer, actually, with the lenya, which is right there. So the hammer is going to strike the cap, and then a spark is going to be created. The chemicals inside are going to mix together. We have black powder, so the first part of the explosion actually takes place inside and this chemical reaction goes all the way down to the chamber. So we hold the trigger like this, always, sometimes it's very windy here and this can happen. The gun fires before 12 o'clock, we waste, we ruin your holidays, we need to refund the tickets, <laughs> we receive a couple of advisors, so we need to hold the trigger like this and now I need to check the lanyard with the other hand. The lanyard is a simple roll with this hook and then this uh, wooden handle. So I put here, and then I wait for the order. My sergeant today is going to give me the order. He's going to use a watch, a chronograph, Victoria as well. Um, also, you can hear the music in the background. When the music stops, slowly we open the chest and we wait for the order. He's going to shout, Noonday gun fire, when we fire at 12 o'clock. When it comes to the 4 o'clock and I'm firing, he will shout, Evening gun fire. And then I have to pull it like this. However, sometimes. A place from where the noonday gun will be fired today is called the saluting battery. It's located on the St. Peter and St. Paul Bastion, which forms part of the historic Valletta fortifications built in 1566. Given its unique vantage point, its guns could easily protect the full length and breadth of the Grand Harbor against a sudden attack. As its name clearly implies, this battery also had a ceremonial role, where gun salutes would be given to visiting ships or dignitaries to mark a national holiday or to announce the news of an important victory. This place remained in constant military use until 1956, when its saluting guns were silenced forever. After that time, its history gradually faded away. Until 2004, when the battery was restored back to its former glory by Fondazione Guardiola, the Water Heritage Trust, with the assistance of the Water Tourism Authority and the Bank of Valletta. Since then, its guns have unfailingly heralded the passage of midday on a daily basis, as you will witness today. Please note that immediately after the firing of the new gun, you can visit this country and see its fantastic collection of historic cannon spanning two centuries. Entrance is via the steps in the back of the balcony or the side entrance in Battery Street.
Make ready! change up when you get home from your holidays, please drop it into our buckets, we can make very good use of it. If you'd like to, if you'd like to take anything away with you, we do have a small gift shop down here. So thank you for your patience, the gunpowder is now back in the gunpowder store. Please feel free to roam the battery if you would like a tour of the battery. carbon etc. We store this today in the silent storm. So inside we have everything we need to fire the guns right there. Right, so we have the beginning of the 20th oh, yeah, century. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So why do we have these guns today in the battery? 17 British, no 16 British and one French. Well <laughs> in 1798 the history of Malta changed completely as usual. The French <laughs> Empire, the super power of the world. They came here and they took the control of the islands in three weeks. It starts from here. So we get the gunpowder from the room and then we go and we march to the guns. We load two, we fire one. So let's... The shade, finally. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we have four cases. Um, 
We have, for example, the number one with the cannonballs. A cannon fires a cannonball, and historically they are made or they were made of different materials. For example, wood, stone, bronze, or even iron. The best one, definitely. So number six to number fifteen. They are long distance cannonballs. There is a difference. Number six to number ten, they are filled with gunpowder, so they are explosives. These ones are solid shots, the traditional cannonball. Number sixteen to number nineteen, ca cannonballs. So they have small cannonballs inside, so after the firing, nine seconds after the explosion, they spread out from the gun. And they are short distance because they are stopped in the air, okay, by air resistance and also the gravity. Sounds very geek and nerd, you know. Number one to number five, chain shots. They were used specifically different armies, different regiments around the world, okay, used to fire these ones, to stop the ships. And they used to go and take them. The price of war was again, because obviously a ship used to be very expensive. It was very simple. You fire against the main sail, you slow the speed, and then you go and you take the ship. Obviously this doesn't happen anymore. Okay, so let's continue. We have a small step here, watch your steps. We go to the next case. One or two, okay. So one hour. So this is how they didn't get lost thanks to the battle. Okay, so let's go to the last case. The front. This is the previous method. There is no bridge. So the fire range would reach one half kilometers, and these guns were significantly significantly stronger, okay? Mandatory to load. Two reasons. First, to increase the compression. More compression is more power, okay? And the second reason, to prevent the cannibal from rolling out the gun. Number firing, you have to refill the tree with gunpowder. So we have the horns right here. So also the guns had a bigger version of this um, first trigger, we can say. With, and number one to number five, the side arms. For example, when we, wish, uh, we, sorry, when we wash the guns, we need to use number three and number five. So with the brush, we can remove any remaining, okay, gunpowder. And finally, the Cold War. And the Maltese participation is very important in this conflict. So let's go with the first one. 1914 is the beginning of the First World War. Right, Malta didn't fight. We played a different role. Malta worked as a huge hospital to assist soldiers, wounded soldiers. So it used to come from all over the continent. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you.